Oh, this is heaven on earth. I'm Nancy Chuda, and welcome to Lexico Living Television. Today we are going to explore the world of Ghana Walaska here at Lotus Land in Santa Barbara, California. You know, they say at birth that when she was born, she was given a creative dollop of genius. She was given more than that, incredible magical abilities to transform 37 acres into a, a wonderland of the most beautiful horticulture in the world. This garden is well known and renowned, respected throughout the world. But a little bit about Ghana Walaska's life. We're going to learn about her, author of A Room at the Top. She had six husbands, interestingly enough. And in her memory, in 1984, when she passed, they created the Ghana Waskala Foundation. And thanks to the foundation, we're able to tour this garden today. So come with us as we discover the world of Madame Ghana Walaska. Gwen Stauffer, executive director of one of the most beautiful horticultural sites in the world. Yes. How lucky are you? Very. You work here every day. <laughs> Tell us about this experience. This this is beyond. No, I, I can't even begin to describe to our audience how beautiful this is. This is a magical, very magical oh. place in one of the top must-see gardens in the world. You got mm -hmm. that right. Okay. And uh, this garden is well over 100 years old, but it's most known for the time when Madame Ghana Walska arrived on the scene in the 1940s and the garden was already being built in the late 1800s by uh, Ralph Ken Stevens who was a landscape architect but she came on the scene in the 40s and, and saw this estate, purchased this estate with her final and sixth husband <laughs> and started building these gardens. Now Madame Ghana Walska was an opera diva, okay. she was Polish, okay. uh, grew up as a teenager in the Russian courts was considered one of the most beautiful women in Russia by the Tsar of Russia. Um, and she had sort of an off on opera career, but she gave that up when she was around 55 and uh, found this estate when she was out here on an opera workshop and her husband convinced her to buy it and so she, and so she did. They moved here together. Their marriage didn't last much longer, but she stayed here and named the estate Lotus Land and she switched her entire career from opera to gardens and she stopped collecting husbands and started collecting plants <laughs> and started building this amazing garden. And I believe that her background in opera really led her to create such drama in this garden. She, when she studied opera, she not only studied her part, she studied everybody else's part, she studied the costumes, she had her own costumes made, she studied the staging and the props. So I think that her, her approach to opera, which was, which was around the theater of it, the theatrics of it, really carries over into the way she developed these gardens. So every garden is very, very dramatic. And as you see, as we'll walk through, every garden is its own room, it's its own theme, and it's all very, very different from one garden to the next, but they just blend beautifully together, almost seamlessly, yet they're very different. It's enchanting. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a tour and we're on 37 acres. We not we may not be able to see all of it today, but we're going to see a better portion of it. Great. And let's go. All I'm right.